How's it going, everybody? I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks for clicking on the channel. About a month ago, Fieldcraft Survival's YouTube channel dropped a video I did with Mike Glover out in Heber, Utah in 2023. On this, uh, Crash Josh. He knows who you yeah, are? <laughs> this is Josh, yeah. Kilo India 6, November off of Zulu. How's it going? This is great. Yeah, this is uh, KI7WJT. Um... Years, Didn't expect that. Can. I, uh... On that video, there's a number of radios that are on the table, and I got a number of people that reached out and said, Josh, what is going on here? What is your radio kit? What do you carry with you? And so that's the purpose of this video. I'm going to walk through those items, but I'm also going to talk about some alternates in case you don't want to go with some of the more high dollar radios. Because, yeah, sometimes this stuff gets really expensive. So let's take a look at what I carry. Starting things off, the highest dollar item in my kit is the ICOM IC705. This is a QRP radio with an internal battery. It will also take a solar panel if you have the appropriate equipment for that. The primary reason I carry this radio is it does VHF, UHF, and HF, and kind of fits into a backpack. It's pretty small, all things considered. Now, for those of you that are new to radio communication, this is a lower powered output radio, roughly 10 watts, the highest it will do. Most of the time, it's only doing five watts output. With that said, it has a lot of capabilities. With its internal GPS, I'm able to basically always have a repeater or radio solution for the repeaters in my area or well-known documented repeaters that run off of D-Star, but also analog think of traditional fm analog repeaters and that's exactly what you saw in that video when we were talking with that fellow ham in heber utah with mike glover one of the reasons why i like the 705 out of pretty much all the portable radios that exist out in this space is it's a one usb connection to like a laptop in case you wanted to do digital data over hf radio or data over vhf radio and uhf i use this primarily for emailing over amateur radio, or sending data messages with software modes and software titles like JS8 Call and FT8. If you'd like to see more on that, follow the links in the video description to talk about JSA Call and how you might use it in an emergency. Oftentimes the radio kits that I go into the field for doing parks on the air or summits on the air is going to be small, this size, and I generally like it that they have an internal power solution but I can augment that with solar if I'd like. For something that was absolutely like it was made for the 705, if I've got the space in my pack, I will carry the Powerfilm Solar Light Saver Max. It needs to be the Max, it can't be the smaller one that's only for cell phones. This has a 12 volt output connection on it, meaning I can plug this into my radio, have the solar panel unrolled, and I can be charging the 705 while using it during the day. This also has an internal battery. This works great in like a water bottle pouch for your backpack or whatever you're taking out in the field. Absolutely an amazing piece of kit. The best part about that is while doing 12 volt output, you still have two USB-A ports that you can charge other devices with. So tablets and laptops, you can keep them going when in the field, which is awesome. I have two antenna options when I am going around with the 705. I will carry a roll-up J-pole for VHF, primarily VHF. I can work UHF with it as well, but my main focus is going to be VHF. And then I'll carry some kind of a long wire antenna. This will live with this radio in the kit, in my bag, whatever I'm taking with me. The six meter mass by Soda Beams. I'm going to start wrapping this up right now, how I wrap it. And just go on the back side of this, start doing figure eight turns on both sides of the pack antenna, start walking it in. I could have a larger antenna that I'm also carrying in my backpack, but at a base level, I will always have a J pole and some kind of a wire antenna, like a pack antenna N fed half wave or a K6 ARK N fed half wave antenna. These fundamentally always go together along with the microphone, the USB connection for a laptop, and I'm set with those couple of things. Now for carrying it in my pack, the radio goes in this Condor hydration pouch. Not a ton of protection with this, but it does have padding on the bottom and on the top and some on the sides. 
the outer pouch is where the microphone, power connector, USB cable, and my kind of emergency Morse code key go on the outer pouch. And this just slides in and this goes in my bag or whatever I'm carrying. Links are in the description to the Condor pouch. I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you see links in the description, know that I'm possibly getting an affiliate cut for any purchases that you make. Good news is it's no more cost to you and it does help on my channel. So thanks for checking that out. Now the ICOM IC705 is probably the top end for a do it all, all in one station that you can put in a backpack and carry with you. Of course, you can always add extra accessories, little dongles and devices to add GPS, add that data connection to a computer and whatnot, add a battery pack, solar charger, you get the idea. I like to pack all of that into the radio though and those are the things that I'm gonna go gravitate towards first because it's gonna be one less thing for me to forget when I'm going out in the field. There are alternatives to the 705 that are less expensive, but they don't offer the same amount of features. The Shegu 6100 comes to mind as being an you know, easy, pretty much do it all type of radio that is a Chinese manufacturer radio from the Shegu company. You might have heard of this company with radios like the G90, which is also very popular. G90 could be considered in this list, but it's not VHF, UHF. It's not an all-in-one radio, uh, and it's also pretty big. Now, if you'd like a really good used option that I think covers most of the bases that people are looking for in an emergency man pack radio, I highly recommend you go check out the Yesu 817 or the 818. The 817 came out first, and there are subtle upgrades to the 17 over to the 18, which you can give or take. You, you're going to be well off if you can find one of these at the $400 mark. That's a pretty good deal, depending on what kind of accessories it comes with and along those lines. This is a used radio. They are no longer in production, but they are everywhere. They're kind of like the Honda Cub of amateur radio QRP portable radio. So you're able to find them on eBay, the QRZ forums, and also the Ham Radio Crash Course Buy Sell Trade. These generally will show up at HamFest and you can snag them for a really good deal if you keep your eyes open. So also on the video with Mike, I was holding this Yesu VX6 radio. This is a tri-band radio, meaning it does two meters, 70 centimeters, and the rarer band of 1.25 meters. That's actually a value point. If you're thinking about emergency communications, you know, depending on the situation, I'm not gonna get super dark with you, but sometimes there's value to having a band that not many people are on, not many people are monitoring or using, and 1.25 meters is kind of like the best of both worlds with VHF and UHF, it kind of being sandwiched in the middle. This is about a $250 radio if you go to Ham Radio Outlet, Giga Parts, or DX Engineering. It's still totally recommended, although it is an older radio now. Do consider getting upgrades for your battery pack, meaning have more of them. And this does take a 12 volt coaxial input, so you can charge this with solar panels as well including your power film solar if you end up picking up one of these. Just note that you're gonna to have to have the appropriate connector to be able to bridge the two together, which if you're really considering communications preparedness, you really need the ability to keep these charged off grid. Solar is pretty much the best way to do it when you're man pack portable. Now in the world of ham radio, if you wanted to save money or you're extremely budget conscious, going with the Yesu VX6 may be too much for you and that ICOM 705 might not even be on your radar. You can absolutely buy the cheap Chinese radios and get started. Just know that if you're going with the Baofeng, they don't accept coaxial charge externally onto these. They generally want you to use some kind of a drop-in charger like this one has. You can buy an extended battery, which this is wearing right now, that does have a coaxial port right there on the side. Just know that if you're buying the cheap $18 unit off of Amazon, it's going to have the standard capacity ba magazine, standard capacity battery, and that requires a drop-in charger of some kind. With that said, there are a lot of new radios that are on the market. This is just one. It's called a Quanchang. This has a USB-C port on the side. USB-C is showing up in a lot of radios these days, which I love, because then you can charge that with a battery bank or going back to your power film, you can charge that off that USB port, freeing up the coaxial for something like your HF radio or, or whatever else you're running. Look for USB-C when you can. I highly recommend that. There are so many radios in the handheld space that just saying get the VX6 and be done with it is probably too surface level and too simple. I've been playing around with this Kenwood THD75 for the last month. I really, really like this radio, but 
and therein lies the problem, $750, which is really, really quite expensive. But this does things that none of these other radios do, so it puts it kind of into a special space. If you're looking for a radio that will run for an incredibly long time, is very simple to use, and has that same capabilities as the ICOM 705, where it will use GPS to figure out where you're at and then give you the local repeaters in that area, please check out the ICOM IC50. It is a really nice radio for the price. It is on the more expensive side, definitely more expensive than the VX6. But the good news is, is that battery lasts a really long time and it's USB-C rechargeable, which is great. Last but not least, a lot of you eagle-eyed viewers watching the video saw a tiny little radio next to my 705 and you were really curious what it is. Well, it lives in this little toolkit that I travel with. This is like uh, an... Uh, this is like a troubleshooting kit. It, it has a Nano VNA in here. It has a multimeter, a number of tools that you might use to troubleshoot what's going on with the radio. This is really handy if you buy used radios or you go to HamFest so you can check and kind of diagnose what the problems are. But in this little outer sleeve here, this bag came on Amazon, I'll drop a link to it, is this tiny radio called a Belka DX. This is a shortwave receiving radio. It is not an FM, broadcast FM radio. It is for shortwave listening. So this is kind of like a redundancy item for receiving that the 705 would fill the primary role, if you will. There are people out there, not to say I'm not one of you, that do consider things like EMP and what the damages could be in a situation where a blast occurs. So I have a lot of radios that are in my tactical trash can, my EM proof trash can, or they're just disconnected and the batteries removed. Uh, that will save a lot of radios if there truly was an EMP situation. But when you come out of a situation like that, you might want to be receiving information but not fully go back onto the operating kind of space. So that's where a receiver like this is actually not really a bad idea. Uh, this is USB micro recharging, which is the only downside I've, I've pretty much gotten rid of USB micro from my entire life. I don't know if they've upgraded this yet, but when they do, that's probably a good upgrade. Also, any kind of portable shortwave radio would be a good replacement here. If you were to ask me what would be my immediate replacement to this, it would probably be the Countycom GP7 that works off of AA cells or the C-Crane Skywave single sideband version 2. That's a really nice one because it runs off of two AA batteries, really good sound, and a pretty easy user workflow. If size and weight is a factor, I would go ahead and say focus on a handheld, get yourself a good replacement antenna that you know can you actually do something with, not these stock rubber ducks. Also bring a roll-up J-pole like I carry with the 705 for your handheld. And if you can swing it, in the same mindset of kind of keeping things cheap, maybe just to get started, oftentimes people ask me, hey, I just bought a handheld. What should I upgrade? And the answer is always antenna. Uh, but sometimes you also want to run this in a car or at home, a number of other things. So here's the recommendation. Regardless of which radio you get, cheaper and exp or more expensive, this is that ID50 I mentioned, get yourself a BNC adapter connection for an antenna port on your radio. See this little guy there? BNC is bayonet connector. And so that means I just take my antenna, twist it on, and it's done. That gives us some advantages because now, let's say I'm going to switch to my vehicle or I'm traveling and I have a rental car. I disconnect off the top of the radio and I bring in a magnetic roof mount. Uh, this is available. Both the antenna, the adapter, and this mag mount are available at Signal Stuff Signal Stick. Slap this on top of your rental car remove the little dust cap, put your antenna on, and throw that on top of your vehicle, and then this goes down to your radio inside. That's a really, really nice way to still stay in comms really quickly while you're on the go, and this just kind of bundles up, and you can throw this in a bag, your travel suitcase or backpack. In my case, oftentimes I'll have this on me if I'm going to be in a vehicle. If you're backpacking or whatnot, you probably can skip this, though. So again, links will be in the description. Thanks for checking those out. Now, I know I've thrown a lot of information at you, particularly a lot of gear that you might not be familiar with. I have a link in the description to a playlist called Are You New to Ham Radio? Start Here. 
And that is a daunting list, I appreciate, but the best way to go about it is simply just start going down the videos, looking through the titles, and if you find something that kind of lines up with what you're looking for, start watching there. I'll leave you with this thought. The important thing to remember in all of this is determining what your needs and your capabilities are. If your goal is to simply just have a couple of radios that you can hand to somebody and PTT and talk, during an emergency line of sight within a couple of miles of each other, well, GMRS is a great option. Just get some GMRS radios. You still probably want that charging capability and maybe an upgraded antenna. That's totally acceptable to do. And you're probably good to go at that point. If you want to start expanding your capabilities, increasing your range, and also go into actually moving data or information in addition to just voice, then that's when you might want to start looking at amateur radio. Still, you can all do the local stuff with ham radio handhelds like these and get access to repeaters and all that other good stuff as well. And I find that that's where I generally line up when it comes to emergency communications preparedness. So I hope this was helpful. Hope this added that extra little bit of detail some of you were asking for after we did the video with Fieldcraft Survival. I am Josh Nass. My call sign is KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you later. 73.